Here's the print hot off the 3D printer then. Not very much in the way of finishing to do. My 1.2mm wire is not going all the way through. I'm just going to clean that up with a, a, a drill. Let's see if that's clear now for the wire. There, that passes through there nice and free now. Don't think there's anything much more I need to do now. Preparation for the servo itself is simply clipping this end off to length and drilling out, it's about 1.4mm drill here, drill out the holes and then join them together somehow. Uh, what I actually end up using was a very tiny fret saw that I have. You then simply pass the servo cable up through there and the servo itself fits neatly into there. Now you could glue this into place or you can put a screw in there. As I happen to have my drill handy, I'm going to put a screw in there. There, that's not going anywhere anytime soon. As you see, I've bent the top just into the shape here and the distance there is about 18 millimeters. You can experiment with that if you don't have enough movement on the wheel. That slides down and engages into the top of the servo arm like so. I have a rather oversized collet, but it's the only one that I could find. And that will simply place over the bottom there. Once that's tightened up, then that's not going to go anywhere. A quick check now with my ancient servo tester. And it's not binding, there's enough of space there for it to move in both directions without binding up. Pretty much good to go. In the next section we'll work out the best way to fix the wheel on here. What I've elected to do then is to take just a piece out of a electrical terminal block as I don't have anything else to use and I've cut the wire off to the same length as that. The reason for that then is twofold. One is that hopefully that will support this so that in the event of one of my usual landings I'll be able to re replace or rebend the bottom section and this will hopefully survive. The terminal block connector is also large enough to accommodate larger diameters of wire. The original Landing gear just slots into a holder in the front there, the length of it then being from there to the wheel. Wheel is somewhat beaten up, mainly because my puppy decided to chew it and I don't have anything else to use right now. In a previous reconstruction I've soldered that together. What I'm going to do now is to unsolder that and cut it hopefully to the same length. I'll go ahead and do that now gone ahead then and attached the nose wheel. Installation quite straightforward, just cut out the opening to the correct size and just with a little bit of Yoohoo pour to keep that in place it's not going to go anywhere. Had to move the battery a little way back to correct the C of G. The whole unit was a little bit heavier than I'd hoped coming out at some 16 grams, uh, the servo comprising 5 grams of that. I'm sure I could make a, a lighter weight 3D printed part. That's a work in progress. Any ideas? As always, please leave a comment below. And now power her up. Zero Have the rudder obviously connected to the channel 4, the rudder servo. And we can see there, I think, it has a, a sufficient amount of movement. Now we just need to wait for a suitable day and get her out on the runway. It's time then to check whether the steering wheel is going to work for real. Let's just see. Oh, I can drive her around in a circle.
Okay. Yeah, and she's away. It still has the nose wheel on. Hurrah. There we have it then, a successful mod for the plane, adding the nose wheel. I'm sure I could make it lighter, and maybe even with a smaller servo, even smaller. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching.